Okay, so in this video we are going to do cervical side bending or lateral flexion goniometry. In your textbook there is no NMT for this, although I will tell you that I do measure this in the clinical environment and we will talk at some point during the semester about how you would test the strength of side bending. For now this video is only going to include the goniometry. So side bending happens in the frontal plane, the end feel is firm, the normal value is 0 to 45 for each direction. So it's 0 to 45 for right side bending and 0 to 45 for left side bending. The patient position is the same as for flexion and extension. So the patient is sitting in a wooden chair, back is supported, feet are supported. If the feet were not supported, we would put a couple of foam squares under there to make sure that they are supported. So I'm going to go to the back of the patient to do this measurement. And so the first thing I need to do is find the spinous process of C7. So can you please bring your chin to your chest? Good, and come back up. So there's her C7 spinous process. So I'm gonna line up my fulcrum with that point. And my stationary arm is perpendicular to the ground. It is not lined up with the spinous processes of the thoracic spine because someone could have scoliosis. And my cues are, I'm gonna have you bring your right ear to your right shoulder. And then I'm gonna palpate external occipital protuberance by going up midline. And then I line up my moving arm with that. So she moved, so the zero is now a black number and she went 20 degrees to the right. Come on back up. And then I'm gonna have you bring your left ear to your left shoulder and I am palpating. This, you can palpate external occipital protuberance after they move like I just did or like now I'm palpating it first, go ahead and bring your left ear to your left shoulder and I'm following it. There's my thumb poking through her hair there. And she's got a little bit more on the left. She's got about 28 on the left. Common compensation for this, we'll, do, we'll go to the left. If she has limited to the left, you might see shoulder elevation, ipsilateral shoulder elevation. Here, I'll demonstrate the compensation. Sorry. No, don't worry, it's because you're, <laughs> it's because you don't have limited motion. Okay, so if someone is limited in side flexion, you might see bringing ear to shoulder instead of bringing shoulder to ear instead of ear to shoulder. Um, so you would just say, okay, hold on, don't bring your shoulder up. Make sure you bring your ear down. You could also give a tactile cue here. The other compensation would be um, ipsilateral side bending of the trunk. So again, you'd give them verbal cues. If that wasn't working, you'd give a tactile cue on the lateral shoulder to keep them upright. And let me just make sure there isn't anything else that I wanted to mention about cervical side bending. I don't think so. That's it.